You know, I think you've been here every day this year. Though it has only been two days, I appreciate it. I'm John Zadar. I am the host of On Top and Hot. And this is January 3rd. It is Wednesday. Which means, that's right, I've got my live streaming event tomorrow. I do this every Thursday, 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Me and my lovely co-host Taylor were there for an hour, maybe an hour and a half, talking to investors about the stocks they want to talk about. You got a stock you want us to look at? Bring us the ticker. Give us a heads up what you see about the stock so we know where to look. I'll go through the information. Taylor will go over the chart. You'll get two opinions on it, whatever that's worth to you. Now, we can only look at so many stocks in the time we have. So if you really want your ticker looked at, get it in the queue early. I put up a placeholder for this video around lunchtime. You can drop your ticker in then. It is first come, first serve, so it'll be guaranteed to be in the show. And if you can't be there, don't worry about it. This is being recorded for you. That's 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, Thursdays. So what we're going to do is look at some hot OTC and penny stocks. We're looking at stocks that are under 5 bucks that have potential to make us money. And you know where you look for those? On every single market. They're everywhere. Now, most of the stocks we look at, I find by looking at the charts. And I found all the stocks we're going to look at today because of the charts. And when I was done, I realized something. They all had one thing in common. They're all atypical breakout charts, basically clones of each other. You know, that's when you got your 200-day SMA coming down fast and furious and the price is deep underneath it. Then that 200 starts to level off and the price hooks, turns around and starts coming at the 200 instead of running parallel with it. And that's when you get your breakouts and your runs. And all of our charts look like that today. First stock we are going to take a look at is HNRC, and I hesitate to talk about this company because I'm still upset with them. As a lot of people are, and I think that's had a lot to do with why she has been in this long downtrend. It was December 16th of 2022, we're talking over a year ago, that they were spinning out WDHI, World Diversified Holdings Incorporated, and we were going to be getting dividends on the 30th of December. Well, they finally got around to distributing them not too long ago, but they are restricted and unregistered shares, which means you can't do anything with them. Why are they in that position? Because WDHI has not gone onto the market yet. She has not spun out a year later. Now, we're going to get some information about that because they came out with a shareholder letter update today, which has got the stock moving, and it gives us a lot of information. So, HNRC finished today at 3.65 cents. She was up almost 26% today. She's on the pink tier, she's current, and she's got those two green ticks we're always talking about, the validated information. So, she looks pretty good from this vantage point. So, what is HNRC about? Well, we'll read this description and then a more detailed one from their news press. The company is a diversified holdings company focused on traditional oil and gas opportunities, as well as energy transition materials, including mining opportunities in copper, lithium, gold, as well as other precious and rare earth metals. The company's focus will be global, with sustainability at the core of the strategy. Now, I got to tell you, that has got to be the most current, updated description they've got because that is word for word the second paragraph out of the shareholders' letters today. Jumping on over to that other description, they tell us here that the company notably has successfully obtained full ownership, 100% interest in Cunningham Energy, boasting an appraised reserve totaling $352 million. Additionally, Houston Natural Resources holds minority investments in Rhino Energy, CE Energy Sponsors, and H&R Acquisition Corps. Now, H&R Acquisition Corps is supposed to be their SPAC company. This is where they're going to be spinning companies out of. So they got a lot of things that they're doing right now. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Well, people are excited. We've got over 100% increase, right? Jumping from 752,000 to just over 1.4 million shares. Share structure for HNRC. Outstanding share count, about 211 million. Insiders own about 45 million. 
That gives us 166 million if these numbers are correct. Market cap for the company, 6.1 million. Financials for the company, they've been growing at a nice rate too over the last four years, going from 3 million to 9 to 18 to 20. We know that's millions and not thousands because they tell us up here we got to add three zeros to any of the numbers on any of these charts. And as you can see, their profits are growing too. Revenues are nice, but if you're not making any money, it doesn't matter. They're bringing home some strong profits. Quarterlies, well, they're bringing home regular revenues of about five, six million, and they're bringing home regular profits. So it does look good. Check out that balance sheet. Well, they don't have much money in the bank, do they? $2,000. Thank God for them three zeros. Total assets, that is at $85.5 million. And look at their liabilities, a mere $1.1 million. That means we've got solid shareholder equity here of $84.5 million. Looking at the disclosures for the company. Now, this is interesting, and this is where you can learn a little bit. This is a pink. They are doing disclosures, which is like the bottom tier of showing us your financials. You don't have a CPA going through them. You're just giving us numbers from the management. Well, when you're on that bottom tier of giving us information, we don't even get 8Ks. Look at this, 2005. They've made lots of deals. Well, if they were on any other tier, the QB, the QX, the NASDAQ, we would have all sorts of 8Ks and 6Ks down here. We get no information. That's the problem with pinks. All right, let's take a look at that shareholder's letter. It is really the only piece of news we need to look at because the, they tell you everything, what's happened and what they're planning on doing. So this came out January 3rd, today. They tell us that the company has filed for a name change and a ticker change for Cunningham Natural Resources with FINRA, having completed this acquisition and getting 100% in the company, increasing HNRC's net asset value by $1.70 per share. Now they say they increased it by $1.70. From what? I don't know. But you could add three and a half cents to $1.70. <laughs> Seriously, they're telling you the share is worth at least $1.70. Now I don't know the formula. I don't know the math that they're using. You can look at shareholder equity and divide that by the number of shares. You can get an equity price. There's lots of different ways to come up with what should be a guesstimate of what the price could be. I don't know what formula they're using. They tell us that Cunningham Natural Resources will be focused on traditional oil and gas opportunities and energy transition materials, sound familiar, including mining opportunities and copper, lithium, gold, as well as other precious and rare earth metals. The investment focus will be global with sustainability at the core of their strategy. That is the new description for the company. Cunningham Energy has completed the prior two years of audited statements for a listing on the NASDAQ or the New York Stock Exchange in 2024 with underwriting commitment of $10 million. This is important, folks. That's probably the biggest piece of information we're getting here. They are telling us they are done with their two-year audit, which is what really halts a lot of companies from uplisting. You have to have two years worth of financials audited and submitted. They say they've got that done. Plus, they've got $10 million backing them up for the uplisting. So it sounds pretty serious to me. Now, here's a little bit of information. It's not anything new, though. Well, maybe a little. The company completed an asset spinoff dividend to shareholders of Worldwide Diversified Holdings, a majority-owned subsidiary of HNRC, and filed with the SEC for registration for the shares to be traded in the first quarter of 2024. Now, <laughs> I don't see any get-out-of-jail-free clause here that says this may not happen, blah, 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 because the fact of the matter is, is that it is in the SEC's hands. From what I recall, they did file the paperwork for the spin-out of WDHI a while ago. We've been waiting for the SEC. Why it hasn't happened? Well, if this company was a reporting company, we would have filings telling us what the NASDAQ or the whoever it is, the SEC wanted. 
We have no clue. So they tell us they anticipate that these shares for WDHI will be tradable the first quarter of 2024, which is saying they expect WDHI to be on the market in the first quarter. It's been a full year. So again, folks, I'm going to take this with a grain of salt. However, there is information here. They're giving you a price of the stock. They do that often. They tell us they are planning on uplisting. They've got their audited statements. They've got $10 million. That's all good news. And that's probably why the chart is changing trend right now. So let's do some charting now. We are over here at my free trading platform, Think or Swim. We are looking at ticker HNRC, Houston Natural Resources. And that is a six month, four hour view. Almost six months ago, we had a high of about 44 cents when she ripped, and I'm sure this had something to do with the Cunningham Energy deal. She banged up there a couple times before she crashed through the 200 and collapsed down here to a low of just over two cents at the very end of December. Now, as you can see, her volume has been increasing here recently, and she has changed her trend. She was running downhill parallel to the 200. Off of this low bubble, she has bounced crossing all of the SMAs, getting on top of her 50. Things are looking nice. We currently are at 3.7 cents. Our 200 is up here at 5.4 cents. So you're looking at roughly 60% gains, just pushing to the 200 before the breakout even occurs. Our oscillators. We've got a crossover on our PPO, percentage price oscillator. Our MACD has just crossed the signal line. You can see every green bar is getting bigger and bigger. And look at that RSI surging from the basement floor in the blue at 29 all the way up to 69.1. This is looking really hot right now on the four hour chart. Looking at our 20 day, one hour view. That looks superb too. Right, she's underneath everything here. She hit this low bubble, got very excited. That was a big bounce coming out of there, jumping off of her 20, jumping onto the nine and flying. I mean, big bars over top of this 200 and she did not look back. There were no bounces. She wants to run. She is sitting there on top of her nine beautifully. All of our SMAs are in the right place. You want the smallest on the top and the biggest on the bottom, except the 200, right? That's the one we're working with. And all of these SMAs have turned up and they're about ready to cross the 200, which is going to give it more oomph to push the price up. And look at our 200. It has been falling. And right now, right at this very moment, it is starting to go flat. This is when I expect to see a surge in the price. Oscillators are hot. Our PPO is climbing hard and fast, just like our MACD. We do have a little bit of cooling off here. We see she did go up and come down and bounced right back up into the center of this bar, which is a beautiful position. RSI, it was in the overbought. She's come down and she's sitting at 65 right now, looking pretty. Five day, five minute view. Well, look at that 200, changed her trend, was coming down, Got flat right here when we started seeing the bouncing on it, right? There was no bouncing here. She was under it when it was falling. Once it got flat, she got on top, started bouncing on it. Once it started to turn up, she started to climb. She bounced off of her 50, got on that nine day very quick. Jump in here from, uh, she opened up at about 2.8 cents and ran up to just over four cents. So you're looking at about 40% run there. Came back down on our 20. You can see how much she is fully respecting this 20 until the end of the day. The end of the day, she had a fall away. She came down underneath the 50. And right now, where are we sitting? She is above the 50 and underneath the 200 haul. And I think she's going to push, folks. What do our oscillators say? Well, you can see she was falling hard on this PPO. And just before she hit the pink line, she hit the brakes. And she's stopping and going sideways. The first thing you got to do when you're falling is stop falling. You just don't normally go to climbing. So that's a good sign. We got the same thing going on with our MACD. It was falling hard. It's put on the brakes and it's now going sideways just before it hit the signal line. And our RSI took a fast drop all the way down to 29 and bounced back up to 51 and it's climbing right now. I think there's heat on the chart, folks. I think the shareholder letter putting a price out there of $1.70, right? That's what they say it's worth with their assets. And they're probably right. They keep putting out these numbers in their press releases. 
the number has fallen, I think. I think it was higher than that before, but in either case, you have an asset number there. We also have stockholder equity, lots of it. And they tell us they are ready to uplist. They've got their two-year financial audits done and $10 million to help them get there. It's looking good for a run, at least, folks. HNRC, I may be upset with them, but hey, I'm a day trader. I will go wherever the stocks are running. Now, here is a company I don't have to go on and on about because virtually every American knows who Rite Aid is. Yes, I am talking about the pharmacy on the corner. We looked at this company not too long ago, just before they entered into bankruptcy. Her ticker then was RAD. Since the bankruptcy, it is RADCQ. That Q represents the bankruptcy that she's in. Now, her chart's been falling for a long time because they've been picking on her. She's been in bankruptcy. They've been pointing out all of her faults. There's been no hope, no light at the end of the tunnel. Well, they just came out with a filing. They've got investors behind her with big money to keep her alive. And of course, that was going to happen. I had no doubt. Anytime you see a huge company that's branded, that virtually every American recognizes, that is generating billions of dollars, Nobody's going to let that die. They'll just restructure it. Think about companies in the past, the recent past, Hertz, L'Oreal, Latham Airlines. Oh my God, they had a ton of debt. Now they've just got a ton and a half of shares. But my point is, no matter how bad things are, if it's generating money and has a million dollar branded name, they're not going to let it pass away. And that's what we've got going on right now, the resurrection. It's a good time to be looking at Rite Aid. So Rite Aid finished today at almost 29 cents and almost 32% gains. And this billion dollar generating company is on the pink tier right now. So I've already told you what she does. You know what she does. Let's take a look at the relative volume. Oh, we only had a little bit of increase, jumping from just about 500,000 shares to 577,000 shares today. Share structure for the company? Well, that surprises me. I was expecting a heck of a lot more shares than that. Outstanding share count, about 56 and a half million. I don't know what the float is, but it's not going to be any higher than that, and it could be considerably less. Market cap for this billion dollar juggernaut is only 12.4 million. Now, why do I keep saying she's a juggernaut? <laughs> Look at those revenues down here on the pink. Remember, we got to add three zeros to any of these numbers. That is $24 billion she did at the end of March of 2023. And as you can see, over the last four years, she's been holding steady. She got up to 24 and she's holding that and she's still in bankruptcy and she's making profit. She's doing $4.8 billion last year. Looking at her quarterlies, generating money. No problems here. We're doing five and a half billion dollars every three months. And they're getting to keep over a billion dollars every three months. And they're in bankruptcy. All they need to do is restructure things and things will be back on track. Let's take a look at that balance sheet out of curiosity. Wow, it's a lot of numbers. Cash in the bank, they got 92 million and they're bankrupt. Total assets, 7.1 billion. Total liabilities, ouch, we're at over $9 billion. So we have stockholder deficit, huge deficit of almost $2 billion. Wow, that's bad. But folks, we're talking about a run on the charts. We're not investing right now. However, I do think this would be a good stock to get into for a long hold. Look at Hertz, look at L'Oreal, look at Latham, look at any bankrupt company that's branded, making lots of money. They're back on the market doing what they're supposed to do. And they were down here at penny stock levels. They're not anymore. Let's see then, what do we got over here for disclosures? Well, it is the disclosure we need to look at. Now, we're not gonna go into all the details. They're in the midst of bankruptcy and there's a lot of information to look at. But what I wanna show you is the hope. It is called DIP. <laughs> DIP Loan Credit Facilities. They tell us here, the simplest I can make it, the lenders have agreed to make available to the borrower, the company, $3.2 billion. 
Now they break this down in a lot of terms, how they're going to get the money, where the money's going. But the bottom line is they have got billions of dollars coming in to help them now from investors. They're not going anywhere. We see the light at the end of the tunnel. Now is the time to get on the tracks. Let's go take a look at that chart. We're going to chart Rite Aid now, ticker R-A-D-C-Q, the new ticker, and yet we've got an old chart. Normally, when you get a new ticker, the day they give you that new ticker, the chart starts on that day, and you don't get to see any of the old ticker's chart. Well, this is the full chart. This goes back years. So as you can see, over the last six months, she has been falling, though we did have a serious rip here in August. She went from $1.50 to over 3 bucks over a hundred percent run. Then she came crashing down through that 200 all the way down to 65 cents. From there, she made her way over to the 200 and it was right here when we looked at it. And this was right before they announced the bankruptcy. She crashed hard after we looked at it, going from about 80 cents down to 11 cents. And from there, she has been going sideways, waiting for the 200 again. And this time we've got all of our SMAs working with us. Our 200 haul is just turning up. Our 20 day, our 50 day is just showing signs. And our price has gotten on top of all of them. Currently at roughly 29 cents with our 200 being up there at 38 cents. Our volume, it's a bit light right now, but it's carrying on. And our oscillators are looking very strong. We've got a crossover on our PPO, crossover on our MACD with the signal line. Bars are getting bigger. And look at that RSI. She was all the way down here about 10 days ago, underneath the 30 in the blue. Has pushed herself all the way up past the overbought, currently at 75. Again, a very hot four-hour chart. Looking at the 20-day, one-hour view. All right, she took a dip here. Our 200 was actually flat. She fell and now she's starting to go flat again with all of our SMAs, our 200 haul, 50 and 20 crossing that 200 right now. That's gonna give us a turbo boost on our price. The 20 is already crossed. You can see how that is ignited and pushed her up strong. Today she opened up at around 21 and a half cents, making it up to 29 cents and it looks like she may be stuck up near that area. Volume, pretty equivalent to everything that's been going on for the last five days. Osculators are still on fire. Every single one of them going to the moon or red. Great one hour chart. Hopefully the five day, five minute looks is good. So we've got a big drop here of 13 cents, but she jumped right back up super quick. Crossed to 200, another dip pushing. That's like a spike. That's going through the 200, locking itself into the dirt so that she can build this bridge because she wants to start going up. That's the way I see these. And she did. She got up on top of that 50 and she is working it. We had a big W here underneath the 50 day. A W, winner. You normally see a big run on the tail of that W. An M is murder. You normally see a big drop off of its tail. And this is climbing nice. Look, she is just floating over that 200. Got close, but never touched it. Really giving most of her respect to the 50-day SMA. She then launched onto the 20 for a short period of time and then kicked up to that nine-day escalator. And she has walked all the way up to that high of 28.99 cents. Look at our oscillators on the five minute. They're beautiful. PPO is climbing strong. MACD is climbing strong. And our RSI is up there at 66. Folks, it's a beautiful chart. And Rite Aid has got a lot going for her right now. She's a billion dollar corporation that is down on the pinks. She has been in the dirt in bankruptcy. And now everybody is cleaning her off because they're gonna put her back out there. Now is a perfect time, in my opinion, to be looking at Rite Aid. You ready for another penny stock with a hot atypical breakout chart? I got one for you. This is Zevo Biosciences, ticker Z-I-V-O. She does have a hot chart. She's also got a low float because they did a reverse split not too long ago, a one in six. 
She hasn't got any current news, but she had a news press come out in October that told us in 45 days they were expecting some information to come back to them. And we're right at that juncture right now. But what really has me looking at this stock are two insider buys. They seem a bit curious to me. So Zevo, she finished a day at $2.75 with almost 86% gains today. She is down there on the pink tier. She is current. She's got one of those green ticks we like to see, the transfer agent verified. We don't have a verified profile. And they've listed independent directors. You got to have independent directors to uplist. And you can't list them over here until you have them. And the only reason you list them is when you have serious plans of uplisting. So they probably want to uplist as most pinks do, but they've probably mentioned it in one of their filings. Which one? Good luck finding that. So what is Zevo Biosciences about? Well, we'll read the description and that's as deep as we're going to need to go because the catalyst is all about, well, I think it's all about these two insider buys. So they tell us that Zevo Bioscience is a Michigan-based biotech company engaged in the investigation of the health benefits of bioactive compounds derived from their proprietary algal cultures. I don't know what that is. And the development of natural bioactive compounds for use as dietary supplements and food ingredients. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Just a little bit of increase going from roughly 37,000 shares to 40,000 shares today. Share structure? Well, they got a lot of authorized shares, 1.2 billion. But after that reverse split, we've got a low float. Now, these numbers aren't exactly accurate. I do have the most current financial here. They tell us here that after the reverse split, they now have 25 million authorized shares, not 1.2 billion, and they have 1.7 million outstanding. Now we know our float isn't going to be any higher than 1.7 million. So we have got a super low float, which can make this stock run with any volume coming in. Think about it. If they were to sell 10 million shares tomorrow, they would have to sell every share that's on the market about five times over. And if some of those people don't want to sell their shares, there's going to be even less of them. And that's going to be like a short squeeze, supply and demand. It's going to force the price to go up. Market cap for the company currently, $3.2 million. Financials for Zevo. Ooh, we got nothing coming in on the annuals. Oh, revenues have just started coming in and they're growing. Over the last six months, they started off at $4,000, have gone up to $11,000, and they are in profit. It's not big numbers, but it's the start of something. The farmer gets very excited when he sees all these little tiny green things down his rows. They don't have to be big and tall. Balance sheet for the company, they got $1.4 million in the bank. Assets are at $2.1 billion million. <laughs> and total liabilities, $3.1 million. So we are in deficit here, just a little over $1 million. Disclosures for Zevo. So this is where I think the gold is at here. This is the catalyst. We've got two Form 4s here and an 8K. The 8K refers to these two Form 4s. Form 4s are filed whenever the insiders acquire or dispose of the company's stock. And they can do that in a lot of different ways. As traders, we're most interested when they buy them or sell them. These are two purchases by the same person. So let's look at the first one here that came out December 13th. This is Christopher. He's a director, owns 10% or more of the company. They tell us here that he made a purchase. We see the P here for purchase, an S for a sale. You see any other code letters in there, it's not a buy or a sell. Well, he got himself 45,000 shares at $1. Now, two weeks later, he made another purchase. This time, he buys four times as many, 157,000 shares at one-third more of the price, $1.30. To me, this seems like eagerness. He's anxious to get as many shares as he can before something happens. What is it that's going to happen? Well, I'm guessing maybe it has something to do with the news. We've only got two pieces of news here. 
the reverse stock split that happened October 26th. And then they tell us that they were initiating a 42 validation study with immune modulating product for the prevention and treatment of this certain type of bacteria in broiler chickens. They've got this additive that you put in the feed for chickens, which is fighting bacteria that are making these chickens bad for us to consume. And they're expecting this information back in 42 days. Well, this was the last day of October. Add 42 days to that, it would take you to the center of December. Well, we don't have any more current news here. They haven't updated us on it, so I'm presuming it's still out there. And I'm thinking maybe that's what the insider buys are all about. He knows that this is about ready to come out, the information, whatever it is, and he knows what it's going to be. So he just made a huge purchase at one third more than he paid for the last one. I think that's a catalyst. And I think the chart is hot. Let me show you what I found. We're now looking at Zevo Biosciences, ticker Z-I-V-O, Zevo. And we are looking at a six month, four hour adjusted chart. Remember I told you the company did a reverse split October 26th, a one in six. Well, we should see a big green bar here pushing that price up, but we don't. What we see is all the prices behind the split have been multiplied by that split number. A one in six reverse split multiplies this times six. So this high bubble we got back here in May of $19, it's not legitimate. You got to divide that by six, which means your price is closer to $3.18 or something like that. So why do they do this? I have no clue. I don't see any harm with leaving a big green bar here. Where I do see harm is leaving this false information on the charts. This is fraudulent. It's misleading. I mean, a year from now, when somebody's investing in this company, doing their research, looking to see the all time high, they're going to see in 2023, it was at $19.08 when it never was. It was at $3.18. So I don't like it, but this is what we got to put up with. But whatever the price was six months ago, we have been falling ever since then deep underneath the 200. We hit this low bubble of 48 cents. We did that uh, at the end of November. And off of that low bubble, she is working on changing her trend. Slowly at first, she just went sideways, crossed her 20, crossed the 50, got up on top of her nine, which is looking nice. Went sideways until today when she decided to launch folks. She jumped here from roughly a buck 40 up to three bucks. Whoa, that is over a hundred percent gains. And she looks like she is ready to continue climbing. Our 20, 50 and 200 haul have all turned past that midpoint and are starting to climb now. Our 200, it isn't flat yet, but she's got to work up to that anyways. We're down here at 275 and the 200 is at 487. By the time she gets up there, it may be quite level. Oscillators, hot. Every single one of them is pushing up right now. And oh my God, look at our RSI. Clear up at 80.2. That is a raging fire, folks. 20 day, one hour view. Oh, does that look nice? So here we are at 57 cents. She got up on top of that 50. Once she got on the 50, she launched herself towards the 200. Lots of excitement here, piercing that 200, coming back down on her nine and then making the move to climb on top. She floated across it for a few days and yesterday afternoon is when she started to actually climb and she is still pushing right now. Look at how she's floating. The only thing I'd be concerned with here is the distance between the SMA and the price and the nine day and the 20 day. Think of everything as being on rubber bands that can only stretch so far. You get them too far, they come back and smack hard. So we got to watch for the pullbacks here. I like our 200. It was falling, got flat right here and just now is starting to turn up. And all of our osculators are on fire, folks. Every single one is pushing up strong. And our RSI is at 84 on the one hour chart. That is heat, folks. Let's take a look at that five day, five minute. Yeah. So we got a low bubble here of uh, $1.20. That was back on the 29th. 
She got up on top of that 50 and took off, folks. She was held down. You can see that. But once she got on top of the 50, she ripped and roared, hitting that $3 high, falling back only to the 9, right? That's what I said. You get too far away from the SMA, you got to come back to it. And that's all she did. She snapped a little bit, came underneath, got her bearings, and she is floating on it. Now, the 20 days caught up. She's tagged at once, come back up on the 9. Looks to me like she is ready to take off, folks. Oscillators on the five minute, okay, they're not on fire, Whew. but they don't look bad. They're cooling off a little bit. Our PPO is going sideways. Our MACD has had a negative crossover. She's actually under, but it looks like she is tempted to start turning up. And our RSI, though it's at 59, is pretty planted. It is flat with just a hint of curving up. But I like it, folks. I think it's looking strong. I think this information they're waiting for, the validated information coming in 42 days, which is overdue now, I'm thinking that's what the investor was buying into. And when it got delayed, he said, I got a chance to get more. So I'm thinking once that information comes out, he's pretty much aware of what it's going to be good news. And this stock is going to pop when that piece of news comes out. And honestly, folks, you'd want to be in before that. That is a speculative purchase. So please do some more research. Don't go investing on anything I say. I give you stocks to consider, folks. I show you reasons why I think they should run. I show you the charts, but it's up to you. Don't just lean on me. I'm not licensed, so I can't even tell you when to buy or sell, and I wouldn't want to because, again, it's your money. So check out what this stock is all about. Check out the other two while you're at it if you're considering them. Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.